Hey there. Well, for you, it's Thursday morning. For me, it's actually Wednesday evening, but in the morning, I have to take Kathy to get her second COVID shot, and we have to leave early, early, early. And so I thought it would be better for me to record it now, post it then, but I also didn't want to kid you that I, I could say, well, here we are, it's Thursday morning, and it will be for you. Uh, my name is Jack Womack. I'm one of the pastors at Hope Community United Methodist Church in Pasadena, Texas. And my practice since the beginning of the COVID quarantining periods has been to post a devotional every day. Uh, our associate pastor, J.T. LaRue, does them on occasion. And uh, what I discovered that it was also valuable for me uh, in getting my day focused every day. Uh, today, I'm going to read, uh, uh, tomorrow in the morning, for, <laughs> for Thursday morning, I'm going to read uh, from 1 John. And uh, it's, uh, it's the fifth verse, and here's the way it goes. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. So it seems appropriate to me to read this passage uh, during Lent. I think uh, in my Bible it's subtitled as God is Light. And I think it's important to hear some of these words maybe again. That God is light and in Him there is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with Him while we're walking in darkness, we lie and do not walk in the light as he himself is the light. We have fellowship with one another. The blood of Jesus is sin cleanses us from sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, who he is faithful and just will forgive our sins. He will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But if we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. So the reality is, friends, during Lent, it's not that we are never going to sin again or that we claim that we are sinless. What, in, what differentiates us is that we confess our sin, that we realize that we, by our own nature, find it easy, sometimes even convenient, convenient or maybe even fortuitous to sin. Owning it is the first step to being cleansed from it. Now we also have to believe that Jesus' word is true. We have to believe that God is light. We have to believe that there is no darkness in God at all. So the darkness that we are living through right now, and there's plenty of it, whether it's economic darkness, whether it's physical uh, darkness, whether it's health-wise, this darkness that we're living through is not of God. God didn't create any of this stuff. God doesn't welcome this stuff. God, in fact, has no part in it except to rescue us from it. And how can we be rescued when we're in the midst of it? Well, the rule, the, the, the recipe, if you will, is really very simple. If we claim we're sinless, 
then we're deceiving ourselves and we're not being truthful. If we confess our sin, if we own it, if we agree that we sin, then we have a chance to be reckoned as righteousness through the amazing and forgiving grace of Jesus Christ. What does it feel like to be free of sin? Well, we never really get to find out. But that is the hope, isn't it? That's the, the dream that we live toward, is to know, is to know that there is hope of righteousness. And so when we at, at Hope we came up with our, whatever you want to call it, 30-second elevator speech, uh, we started it off by saying we offer real hope for real people. In other words, real people to me means sinful people, ordinary people, the people like you and me, not those high and mighty people that think they've got it figured out. For the folk that don't have it figured out, the ones that don't know which way's up, the ones that don't know what it means to be righteous, that's the one that we want to offer hope for, not to. We're not beating them with it. We're not hitting them with it. We're offering it for them as if we would give them a drink of water. And, and so when we offer real hope for real people, the next notion that we came up with was, well, how do you do it? How do you measure it? How do you know if you've accomplished it? And the, the words that we put to that message were, by becoming the heart and hand and feet of Jesus Christ, for our community and for the world. You know, I'm continually amazed that people will drive up to our blessing box, which is a no contact uh, uh, coronavirus kind of creation. There's no signs, there's no sign up, there's no asking you where you live, there's no checking your finances. It's just a place where you can drive up and the sign says, take what you need and leave what you can. And I can't count the number of times that I see people drive up and I'm concerned because maybe the food supply is a little low that day or maybe we're running a little lower. Maybe nobody's had time to, to fill the box up and the people didn't come to give, get food at all. They came to bring it. These are not people that are affiliated with us at all. And, and so what I want to tell you, in the midst of this darkness, there is light. And wherever there is light, there's God. Now, I think it's important because some of us have done stuff. And we wonder, are we really saved? Are we really forgiven? And, and it's pretty clear right here in 1 John, it says, if we confess our sins... He who is faithful and just, being Jesus Christ, will forgive us our sins and then will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I don't know how it gets any better than that. All unrighteousness. The only thing we have to do is confess that we have been unrighteous, that we have sinned, that we have not been what God called us to be. And if we can just admit it openly, freely to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he is committed. He's made the promise. He will forgive all of our sins and he will also provide us an ability to be righteous. He'll, he'll get rid of the unrighteousness in us. Well, I don't know if those words help you or not, but it really helps me to know that no matter who I am or where I was, God's really concerned with where I am now and where I'm going from here. There's so many things I could say about that in this current age we're living in, such a time as this, where uh, there's there's political angst. Uh, there's, there's all kinds of animus about uh, whatever that you read in the news. And it seems like the news sort of helps to, to spread it, to make it worse. The reality is, friends, the news doesn't have any effect 
on the saving grace of Jesus Christ. So my, my plan, my hope, my prayer for you today is that you can confess your sin with knowing that the promise of the faithful one, the just one, will forgive our sins and will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And I don't really care how you look at that. That's good news. Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you. Thank you for these words from 1 John. Thank you for the Holy Scriptures. And we thank you for Jesus Christ. We confess we are sinners. And God, we need you so desperately. It's in Jesus' holy name that we pray. Amen.